So I mentioned in an earlier lesson that Gibbs free energy is called free energy because it's free and available to do work. Why is not all of the energy that's released by a reaction available to do work? Let's consider maybe an exothermic reaction where you have carbon and you have hydrogen and they are reacting to make methane, okay? And in this process, we know that it's releasing that heat into the surroundings. Why is not all of that heat available to do work? Well, I'm gonna look closely at this reaction here, and, and it's on your screen in the blue box, and we've got the carbon in the form of graphite reacting with two moles, and I don't know why I have a three there, so let's make it a four, two moles of this, okay? And it's telling me exactly how much heat is being released, and negative 74.6 kilojoules is going out into the surroundings. That's the delta H value. It is exothermic, and that's the delta H of the reaction. Gibbs free energy is not all of that. Not all of that is free and available to do work. So why is that the case? Let's look at this reaction, um, and let's put the states with it. This is a solid, it's graphite. This is two moles of a gas, and this is one mole of a gas. So when that reaction takes place, my question for you is, what's going to be the sign of delta S of the reaction, the entropy? Now, I'm not asking you to go calculate the magnitude of it and give me a number. I just want to know, is it going to increase in disorder? Is it going to decrease in disorder? What is the sign? And to look at that, we look at the moles of the gas. Two moles of gas going to one mole of gas. What does that mean? Well. This is getting less disordered, okay? That is a decrease. You got less gas. Gas is what's causing all of that issue. So I've got a reaction in which the delta S of the reaction is positive. It, I'm sorry, it's less than zero, it's negative. I'm decreasing my disorder. Now, the only way a reaction can be spontaneous is if the delta S of the universe is greater than zero. So if this part going from here to here has a negative delta S of the reaction, but the delta S of the universe must be positive, then my surroundings is better be positive and it better be more positive than this is negative, right? Does that make sense so far? In order for the universe to be positive, I've got to have the surroundings be more positive than this part is negative. So there's a connection between the delta H of the reaction and the delta S of the surroundings. I'm going to make a note here that the, this tells me, this piece right here and this piece right here together tell me that the delta S of the surroundings, S-U-R-R, -R, must be bigger, must be more positive than the delta S of the system, the reaction, is negative. Okay, so we'll put a little cloud around that. A squeaky cloud. I'm going to make this thing work a little bit better. Okay, this is what we know so far. So what has to happen? I've got to have some of this, but not necessarily all of this, making my surroundings have a positive delta S. Okay? Now, I went looked at some tables and I determined that the delta S of the reaction is not only negative, but is actually equal to a negative 81.49 joules per Kelvin. So I went and figured that one out. So I know that the delta S of the surroundings, the S-U-R-R, -R, the surroundings must be more positive than that is negative. So if my delta S of my surroundings was at least 81.5, that was a 9, that doesn't look like a 9, 5, okay, then I could take this number and this number and add them together and have a positive delta S of the universe. So let's figure out that relationship. This is what I need for the surroundings. What will my delta H, how much of that delta H of the reaction 
I have a lot. How much of it will I need to use to make my surroundings have that kind of value? And I had to pick a temperature and I didn't state a temperature. I'm going to use 298 Kelvin, okay, um, for that value. And when I, I did it again. <laughs> All right, class. We're going to back up the tape and we're going to try this again. The delta S of the surroundings is equal to a negative delta H of the system divided by temperature. I know I need this much for my surroundings. Okay, I'm going to pick a temperature of 298 Kelvin, room temperature, 298 Kelvin. Now I know the delta of the system is really all of this, but I don't need all of this to get enough entropy of my surroundings. When I calculate the delta S of the system that I need, how much of that delta H of that reaction I'm going to need, I find that I only need 24.3 um, kilojoules. Okay, now I had to do a little work here. I took this times this, and that gives it to me in joules. And then I do a, uh, go from joules to kilojoules, and I find that I only need to use, of all of this that's released, okay, I only need to use 24.3 of them to make my surroundings disordered enough to give me an, a universe that's positive, okay? So that's why it's free and available. I needed this much of it to make my universe positive. The rest of it, and how much would that be? Well, that would be 50.3 kilojoules of it would be free and available to do work. Now, what did I do here? I basically used that information to come up with this, but in a talk you through it process. Okay, but that's why it's free and available. Some of this energy must go to make the surroundings positive enough to overcome the negative that we have in the reaction.